Okay, folks, Patrick Penry here. It is the 11th of November, 2013, at 7.23 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're all sitting back looking at the effects of Haiyan, Super Typhoon Haiyan. Now look, we had the largest hurricane ever, Sandy. They sprayed that with chemtrails and engineered that. Same time they did Isaac that same year, if you remember, it went across the Republican National Convention to help Obama get elected. We had the largest tornado ever, over a mile-wide swath of tornado, okay? We're having these super typhoons, largest ever before recorded. Now, they say it's climate change is what they want us to believe. Do you believe the government? Do you believe the government? We have evidence of an earthquake and tsunami drill that took place on the day of the Fukushima earthquake and tsunami. If there was an earthquake, some people are saying there wasn't. We know there was a tsunami. We know they possess remote earthquake technology for General Cohen said that clearly in 1997. In 97, okay, he said even now there are those eco-terrorists who are setting off earthquakes and volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves, end quote, General Cohen, 1997. Now, I do not have to understand how the weapon works. I do not have to possess the weapon. I don't even have to know what the weapon looks like, okay? For me to have seen their plans and intentions of wanting to build the weapon and design the weapon and fabricate and perfect this weapon, and then there's a period where nothing happens as they're perfecting this weapon, and then we're getting hit with chemtrails and superstorms and one-mile-wide tornadoes, remote earthquakes, volcanoes going off all over the place, and they're doing a lot of drills. Like in Haiti, they did a drill the day before. As I said, at Fukushima, they had at the exact same moment that the tsunami was generated. JNES, the Japanese Nuclear Service, and the NRC were in a tsunami and earthquake drill that took place at the exact same time coincidentally just like the federal building bombing had a bombing drill 9-11 had vigilant guardian hijack exercises haiti had the drill before haiti 7-7 train bombing had the drill aurora shooting sandy hook shooting had drills okay are you guys starting to get this now we have this massive typhoon that according to this guy right here targets itself straight for the china slash japan 2013 war game exercises hmm convenience convenience you know, 10,000 plus people were killed. Folks, I put it to you that the largest countries of this world, China, Russia, and America, I guarantee, they all possess remote earthquake technology. They have perfected the tsunami bomb. They have perfected the remote shooter mind control. Heck, you know you can buy a kit to take a roach and put the electrodes and put the pack on his back and you can remote control the roach with an app with your cell phone. Fact, in 1960, the CIA had two girls hypnotize, plant briefcase bombs, and return without even knowing they had done it. So if you look, we're seeing a major pattern here. Now, law enforcement has completely failed us. I mean, absolutely failed us. At first, they'll say, but how could they have such a big conspiracy and get away with it? They only have to fool the first herd, the mass of people. Sure, on the outside, a small percentage of us know exactly what they're up to, but we can't do anything about it. Because within that first herd of massive, brainwashed, socially engineered, dumbed-down, fluoride, chemtrail-sniffing, a herd of sheeple, they don't know and they don't care. And you can even tell them and they don't care. They've created this mass of people that are literally robots going about their business, uncaring, unfeeling, unknowing, and that's not going to change. So it's quite easy for them actually to conduct these exercises, to use weaponized weather against us, to use their shooter drills, shooter operations against us. They'll use hoaxes against us. Maybe a shooting didn't even occur, but the first herd, if they see it on TV, they take it at face value. You must understand the manipulation of the first herd, and that includes law enforcement, just like it said in the Matrix. Doctors, lawyers, policemen, carpenters, the very minds of the people we're trying to free. Okay, they're inside and they're brainwashed, they're indoctrinated, they're socially conditioned, they're dumbed down, they have no interest in knowledge, they don't want to know, they don't want to educate, they are falling behind. So it's not that hard to conduct these operations based on the fact that 90 plus percent of our population remains willfully oblivious to what's going on. Okay, so don't, I don't want to hear the, but how could they spray chemtrails and keep it a secret? Look, they only have to keep it a secret from the first herd, who's so dumbed down and stupid right now. That's not a hard task to do now, is it? They've been getting away with it for, what, 10, 20 years now, nonstop. 
and it's picking up. It's picking up. It's picking up. Now, I can't tell you if China's involved in some of these because a typhoon hit Fiji not long ago, and there was China to offer economic aid. They do this. Right after one that they generate, they sweep in and they offer aid. Right now, you can see with this typhoon, the United States military, just as they did in Haiti, just as they did at Fukushima, they sweep in to offer aid, right? If you cause the superstorm, if you cause the earthquake, in order to make it look like you didn't cause it, you want to sweep in with aid later, offer them economic loans, which later they can't repay. The World Bank will do that, and then we'll, the monetary fund will seize their assets, and it'll be turned over to the corporations, just as it was at the Indonesia tsunami. If you read Naomi Klein's book, on disaster capitalism, you will see that in 2004, the Indonesian tsunami, the corporations were lying in the wait to go in and take over that beachfront property. And that is a fact. Millions, billions are being made. Home Depot's not complaining. Okay, millions, billions are being made. Agenda 21 is being advanced. Folks, if you do not see this pattern, this is not good. This is not good. So I just wanted to I know we're in a bad way. I know the consortium, that's what I call them. It's a group of corporations are in bed with the military, the intelligence, the government, the wealthy bankers. These are the ones behind us. I call them the consortium. You can call them the Illuminati or the New World Order, but it's a group of corporations is all it amounts to and very high level wealthy people conspiring behind our backs. Look, as far as the weaponized weather, we see their plans for many years. Go to chemtrailsplanet.net. If you don't know about weaponized weather, if you don't know about remote uh, earthquakes, if you don't know about the Project Seal tsunami bomb, go to chemtrailsplanet.net. If you don't know about the ongoing Russia-American project to melt the polar caps, yes, and ongoing for many years between a joint project, Russia and the United States, to melt the polar caps, go to chemtrailsplanet.net and, and, and do some research and do some reading. If you're watching TV, you're falling behind. If you're on the internet and you're reading, be very careful. There's a lot of disinformation. You know, the people we're up against have a lot of money and they can afford to hire trolls and shills and deceivers and liars online, fake bogus websites, fake media personalities. That is what they're doing and they're very, very good at it. And it's all, again, hinges. It always, for me, comes back to the fact they control that first herd of people, the masses of people. It's very easy to spray chemtrails over their head when they don't look up, when they don't look up. Okay, when you've dumbed them down to a degree, they don't want to know. They're not interested. So that's what we have to change. We have to replace the media, replace these bogus figureheads, and we have to decide what the topic of the day is. Right now, this morning, for me, it's weaponized weather. They're using satellites. They're using chemtrails. Our ears are ringing. I don't have to possess a weapon, nor do I have to understand exactly how it works to see the evidence of their desire to create it a space of time wherein they do their creation of the weapon, and then the weapon is deployed and you see the effects of it. World's largest uh, tornado here we just had, largest superstorm Sandy, a largest typhoon high on. I mean, it keeps on going, a record 9.0 in Japan. And all of these are generally, there's a, there is a drill that happens the same day at the same time or the day prior to, because this is treason against the American people. It's treason against people of this planet, period, period. Okay, that's it, Patrick Penry. Have as great a day as you can, considering what's going on in the world today, right? Okay, Patrick Penry, over and out. This is one for the record. I'm Diana, and today is November 15th, 2013, and here are your news updates for today. It is Friday, Friday evening. Very, very late. The Watchers Watching the World. Unique Cosmic Coincidence. Comets Inky and Ison to fly by Mercury. Also, Transhuman Radical Life Extension in the Quest for Immortality. Also, see, and I was going to be chronically frozen. I don't think I can afford that anymore. All right, also, comet I saw an outburst could become easy naked to the eye object by the end of the, of the week. So it's right now. So you might be able to see it. Eruption of Kluvehesskia sends a plume of ash four kilometers in the air. 
German scientists discover bacteria that make ice, clouds, and rain. Oh, so they, they, they have discovered bacteria that does that now. Not, not just uh, chemtrails and, and weather modification. Now, we'll blame it on the bacteria. Maybe it's little nano bacteria. Is it really bacteria, bacteria? Hmm. Alrighty then, just a thought. Moving on. Breaking news, breakingnews.com. Nine people reportedly trapped after elevator malfunctions in downtown Chicago. That was five hours ago. I hope they're still not in there. All right. Reminds me of that American Blackout movie. <coughs> Magnitude 5.1 earthquake hit southwest of Akari, Peru. Heads up. Milford, Texas remains evacuated for second night as gas pipeline fire continues to burn. That was three hours ago. Two hours ago. Heads up, report United Health Group drops thousands of doctors from its network. Coming out of WSJ. That was two hours ago. Okay, let's move on. Uni News, Energy News, Japan, Fukushima. Gunderson, health effects from Fukushima are being hidden. Japan not publishing data on stillbirths, spontaneous abortions, cancer, and more since 311. Indicates they're afraid to release it. Also, nuclear engineer, new footage shows Reactor 1 has ruptured containment structure, most likely from the explosion, water to cool, what's left the core following, flowing, sorry, flowing into environment, meaning you have a leak, it's leaking radioactive water, it's flowing into the environment. Gunderson, already very close to going critical at Unit 4, must be extraordinary, careful about start, starting chain reaction. Also, photographer, no sign of life in Fukushima exclusion zone, only a few birds. Alrighty then, nothing on U.S. Canada. So, it is five days down, we made it, be safe out there. <coughs> Excuse me, still be prepared for anything. Because I never heard anything about that power drill and uh, inert drill, grid 2, whatever it's called. So be ready for anything. Alrighty then. And I'll see you. Be safe and I'll see you. Be ready for anything and I'll see you tomorrow on the flip side. Stay tuned. I'm attaching all kinds of videos for you guys. And see if you can see ice on out there. Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. First, we're going to have Chris Harris give us an update on Fukushima Daiichi. And then we're going to hear from Professor McCann, who's on in the first hour. Uh, Chris, what's the latest? Today, they're starting to move these fuel rod assemblies, and we have incompetent people trying to put out videos and other material and brochures telling us, don't worry, be happy, like Bobby McFerrin's song about a decade ago. Uh, and uh, people that have two clues shouldn't buy this. The Japanese, TEPCO, and uh, the people involved here, General Electric, really sh don't deserve to have any trust. So what's the latest, Chris? Uh-oh. Okay, the latest is this week it looks like they're going to uh, attempt to remove the first of the controlled batch of fuel that they've decided to uh, go for, and it would be the most uh, easy. So they're going up to the low-lying fruit first, and as I would expect, they test out all their equipment.
do such. And uh, hopefully uh, at that point, I know, you know, we don't like to use that word hopefully, that uh, they're going after the first uh, batch that doesn't look like it had any damage to it. Of course, you can't tell because there could have been debris that fell within the crack, that, or the crack, that the slot that it surrounds each of the spent fuel. Yeah, it's about a half an inch, 13 millimeters, and we don't know what's going to happen. Except they, they did answer some questions about that, and that's good because they need to answer those questions. They didn't just sit down and say, you know, we're we're uh, we're driving the bus, and you sit down and shut up. They didn't say that this time because a lot of people are concerned about what may happen if a fuel assembly gets scratched and bre and breaks because it's been subject to seawater and corrosion over a period of time now, which is not the uh, environment for so aging of and, and neutron flux annealing of the metal and the plastic and those support structures as well as subsidence where the entire building is bending over and they dropped a crane on top of these fuel rod assemblies too they did indeed drop they, they do have uh, images of uh, this is called a bale although they're calling it a handle that's where the grapple hook hooks onto a fuel assembly bundle and they're crushed in some some areas and it's hard to tell in the slot exactly what the condition of the rest of the fuel assembly is but the concern to me would be if one falls apart as you're pulling it will you get a criticality action a, you know an interaction with several other uh pieces of fuel and and, and that of course would uh well, in that, if that happens, then you will have an airborne release because at that point it will all bubble up. And you were talking earlier on your show about iodine formation. Well, that is where it would come from in the next step. So, of course, we're all going to be watching this very closely, and their their equipment is is all brand new inside inside the uh, newly erected uh, structure that we talked a long time ago about that they needed to cover these buildings and that was one thing we did say and that you know that and they, they really did do that now yeah. um we don't know how uh to what codes that these were built and to uh how you know, how fortified the structure is it looks it looks from the outside pretty beefy but uh you know it was hastily erected again it was, you know, the planning was pretty, yeah. pretty bad. The storage tanks etc uh the question okay. i have is you're, you're a safety officer either on site or here in North America, if there's a major power fork fire, what would you recommend, say, in your home, whether you're on the West Coast, East Coast, or in the mountains, what would you recommend you do for your family? What would, what would the steps you'd do? And then I'll kind of, you know, add to that a bit, and then we're going to bring on Professor McKinney. Well, you know, that's, uh, I keep on deferring to you on that one because that's not my area of expertise. My area is to stay uh, okay. out of Okay, let me, let me run this by you, what I would say. Let me okay. run this by you and see if, if you're in the plant or nearby community, yeah. let's say you were doing work for TEPCO and you had to live in an apartment, say, a mile away, and you had a major radiation release, the first thing you do is if you had an airport, if you had a HEPA filter, the particulates you want to get out of the air, you want to seal off your room with duct tape around your windows, around the edges to make sure it's airtight. Um, you'd also want to take radioprotectant nutraceuticals like Nutritrala, Nutriodine, Nutridefense, etc., cell detox glutathione, high dose power C, etc., you want to have a NIOSH mask to add an extra layer of airborne protection so you don't get any particles that embed in your airways. And they go down, of course, the GI tract as well. Uh, you want to take probiotics because that takes out, according to Dr. Osof, to rock with 85% of the radioisotopes. You want to take Keeler Max, our liquid zeolite, which is the most powerful zeolite available, so I'd take Keeler Max first and then zeolite. Uh, people need to be prepared for the fact they need to hunker down for a period of days, they should have a data logging uh, radiation detector they can run with a USB cord to their computer and actually monitor the radiation outside to make sure it's safe to even go out because it may not be for anywhere from three days to two weeks. Uh, Professor McKinney, you're, you have some expertise in this area. Uh, what, what else would you suggest? And then we're going to hear your story about ISON and what's happening with the NERC people. Uh, so far, they're extremely obtuse in their reporting on what's happening with the North American Electrical Reliability Corporation. But I always worry when the government does a drill because they haven't actually hardened the power grid. They haven't actually proven that they've made backup power safe. Even reactors are, are their water intake for their diesel generator backups is below the high water mark. We talked about this in the last few years with Chris Harris. Uh, I see a government that's completely incompetent who doesn't fix the problem and then does a test and then says it's okay, everything's fine, and there's no real-world testing by turning off the power or actually upgrading systems before they do that. 
So I don't know what they're actually doing, but the timing uh, with the ISON comet is pretty quirky, isn't it? That, that is very quirky. Uh, Dr. Bill, I want to go back just a step. You were talking about preparedness for a radiation dose. Yes. And the, the, the thing people have to realize is you have to stay put. You have to have water that right. is uh, not, treated, not, not contaminated. And uh, uh, I, you know, I don't want to boast about what I have on my webpage, but I have two items. One is a modular filtration and storage system where you can uh, store in sealed containers water. And the other item is a pre-filter designed to take radiation. Radiation typically grabs onto dust and powder and is designed to take that out before you put it into your water filter. So uh, water is an essential thing that people need and they have to be prepared to have their own water supply. So anyway, just yeah. in a, yeah. a and, and, and I think you have good systems too. I, I have, for example, a water filtration system I'm putting in my roof water collection. So even when I water my plants in my garden and my fruit trees, but I think you have a temple. I, John Moore's rule is two is one and one is none. We have the BEV system, BEV 200, emergency backup power system that has a 12 volt pump that is portable. You can run it right off your car or truck. We have the best systems, but I think it's important to have systems. You've got to take out the radioisotopes because it's not a matter of it's theoretical that you're going to get radiation. We're all being poisoned as, as we speak. This is not a theory. This is just a plain, ugly fact. And the people who want to dispute it, I dare them to come on the air and at any time discuss the fact that they think it's okay. And there's a number of wonks for the nuclear industry trying to say it's fine. Same people with a brash down that know the nuclear industry is killing itself because it's not getting rid of radioactive waste, it's a prime target for terrorists, not, and also just with earthquakes and volcanoes. Fukushima is a good example. They, they didn't have, you know, they even destroyed a lot of the natural terrain there to actually put the Fukushima plant down 75 feet lower than it should have been, 25 meters, uh, which, by the way, would have probably put it high enough that they wouldn't have swamped over the uh, diesel generators and they wouldn't have had the problems. Although pulling the reactor number one was sitting on a fault line, so the earthquake apparently cracked right through the reactor core even before the tsunami struck. So we have, you know, they shouldn't put reactors in tsunami zones or on earthquake fault lines. But New Madrid is a good example. The uh, Diablo Canyon reactor up in Northern California sitting on the convergence of three fault lines. The San Onofre reactor is right near the San Jacinta Opsrat zone, which is actually five miles off the coast, not 125 like Fukushima Daiichi. It's right off of the coast near... Um, the islands there, the Catalina Islands, people need to be aware that uh, the nuclear industry doesn't give a, a rat's behind, that the government is always incompetent, and that they usually get the most, uh, what I call, compliant nuclear and scientists that will go along with industry or government policy, rather than people that actually care about, you know, the safety of whatever they're doing. So when we come back, I want to hear your comments on that, and I sign, and more from Chris Harris. Uh, this is a dangerous day. Uh, we have... NERC simulations going on, which I don't think anything's going to happen, because they know that we're primed and ready to say false flag, false flag. And that, by the way, with the truth media, the news media, we're the news, they're the snooze. We're keeping our eyeballs on them. We'll be back in a moment with Chris. Anything else? Second, I would say, is a coronal mass ejection caused by one of these comets that comes in, and probably significantly less likely. Uh, or an economic collapse caused by the bond market run from India, Turkey, uh, Brazil, etc., causing uh, the collapse that way. But there's multiple things, including Obama's compliance with the uh, with the Israeli plan to attack Iran, which is insanity plus, are still even uh, the semblance of what they are today. But right. the banking world in the United States has crashed. Um, you cannot use American credit cards in many foreign countries today. Uh, you cannot uh, use uh, American debit cards in many foreign countries. Uh, it's it's unbelievable what's going on. Yeah, the, the world is obviously, and for for correct reason, turning against the United States. And as I've always said, it's the problem is the American public for allowing this to get the, to the state. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Obama's just a symptom. He's a symptom of a lot of gimme people. So if you're going to be obtuse and not tell us what you're actually testing, why? You know, yeah, the, can you the, figure that out? I don't understand it. The NERC test is very bizarre, but it's 
uh, like I said, it's simply putting us one step closer to a false flag power outage. Um, I right. In other words, it's, it's testing the response going. of the people. It's not testing the power grid because if they're going to just do a computer simulation, why would they announce it? Just do it. If they're going to test the equipment, yeah. you know, then, then upgrade it first because they'll know from the previous data where there's weaknesses in the system. I mean, they found this in California. I was reading about NERC here that the California is cooperating because they're concerned about testing the viability of adding, you know, 11,000 megawatts of power by 30,000 additional power uh, generators on here. Okay, so it talks about the Grid X2 exercise. In other words, people are going to generate solar and wind and other power and dump it back into the grid. The grid, and this is what my experts in California alone have already told me, the grid can't survive this. They can't survive the targets that the government's made for just adding solar and wind power. It'll blow the grid to pieces. They know this. Why don't they just fix it first rather than saying, well, we're going to race ahead anyway and put all this transient surges of power on it, depending on the sunlight or the wind, and expect the power grid to be able to heal itself. And then their idea is to put smart grid in there to shut off your appliances so you can only do your laundry after 11 o'clock at night like they do in Sweden. This is insanity. This is double stupid. Plus, it also makes it easier to be hacked into by Chinese Tianjin Blue Army if they do really truly want to do cyber terrorism. Yes, three, you put in a smart grid and you can actually hack in and shut everything off and cause power blackout to nuclear plants. Your comment, uh, Professor McKinney and Chris. Um, yeah, the, uh, the insanity level is you have people that don't know anything <clears throat> running the government. Uh, how can you take a guy who is a, a, an attorney in Chicago and uh, questionable other qualifications and make him, put him in, in charge of the United States with all of its infrastructure and complicated uh, scenarios? I mean, well, first I, off, you, you need know, to do an IQ test. No one should get into the presidential running race unless you have an IQ 160 plus. Number two, you have to have a broad background, which is science-based. Most of the politicians, for example, in China are engineers or PhDs. Very tiny amount are, are have the a, quote, geopolitical or legal background. The vast majority of our so-called politicians have no science background whatsoever, and they have no idea of how even economic systems work. Whatever Mickey Mouse level of economics they have, they're totally corrupt, and they don't understand any science. And the real purpose of government is to create infrastructure, protect the nation uh, militarily, and they don't understand either one of those. It's ridiculous. Well, well the other role of government is to stay out of the way. Exactly. Uh, the, the, the role of government is simply to provide a highway so everybody can drive on it and do commerce, not to put exactly. toll booths up and tax everybody to death while they're driving well, on the highway. Well, that's why they even keep people poor. They keep people poor because the uh, bureaucracy and industry of keeping people poor creates a giant undercult, superculture of government bureaucrats that have to be there because you have a poor population that requires their next bowl of gruel, the next food stamps, the next mediocre health care that will be administered by foreign medical doctors and nurses because all of our doctors and nurses, if they have two clues and have decency, will quit. It's just disgusting, isn't it? Amazing. I can hear the bumper music, and we will be back tomorrow. It's going to be firing line. Thank you, Chris Harris and Professor McCanny. Major updates on hour two tonight. I'll be on a guest on the Rents program explaining on these and other issues. Firing line, you want your questions in, do call 888-212-8871. Place your orders from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday to Friday, Pacific time. Or you can do it online 24-7. All of our radio shows, all of our direct TV programs, everything is free. You can access anywhere in the world. We'll be back on hour number three tomorrow also with preparedness, civil defense, martial law, John Moore and Morrison. Thank you, Professor McCanny, Chris Harris, Tim Alexander, and all you listeners out there. Take care and take action. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll try to give you answers and give you some help. Pray for America. All right, guys, uh, just want to take you to this. Um, now, what we've got is basically almost a third of US West Coast newborns hit with thyroid problems after Fukushima nuclear disaster. Um, and that's because in the uh, 
West in America they do blood tests on all thyroid or all, all all babies basically for thyroid uh, abnormalities or hypothyroidism. So <clears throat> basically, RT has reported this, and it was on April the third, uh, twenty thirteen. And uh, I'm going to leave a link to it so you can read that for yourself. And I brought this up because they're saying that uh, the West Coast got hit by iodine-131 from Fukushima, increasing hypothyroidism in, uh, in children. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> and of course, we're, we're looking at uh, a medical reactor going off in Europe. So I just wanted to bring you to this um, article. And let me just see. So... If we go to this particular article here, I'll just zoom in a little bit. Um, and uh, Fox News, iodine-131 causing infant deaths in Philadelphia. Uh, and then there's some issue uh, around whether uh, when this story first broke, uh, whether it's uh, Fukushima or whether it was local um, medical uh, uh, isotopes uh, that were doing the job. Uh, so basically the there's a big discussion about it. Um, I, th I think generally that uh, there was a problem from 2005 in uh, Philadelphia, I believe, uh, to do with isotopes in the water supply uh, causing these problems. Uh, but um, there was also a discussion about the fact that there was on top of that, then you had uh, uh, sort of iodine 131 from um, uh, basically uh, Fukushima, which uh, came along as well. So. Anyway, there's a discussion going on there. I just wanted to bring you to that, and that was, and I wanted to bring you to this one particularly because it is sort of saying, well, look, this is medical. This is the reactor we make for chemotherapy. Uh, these are waste pro producers, or they're the uh, products coming out of the patients into the uh, water supply. One of the two, or both. Um, so <clears throat> basically, uh, the, there has been a problem. It was reported, um, and there was uh, quite a 48 percent increase uh, in the death rate of babies uh, uh, and it says that since iodine 131 was found in philadelphia's drinking water but it had been since 2005 and uh, we haven't got the stats to match up the infant deaths with the other other peaks and troughs of iodine 131 so um, i was just going to take you to those two articles and then i'm going to go straight to this if it, oh, if it works all right, okay. Information regarding stillbirths. Um, just I might have to zoom out a little bit here. Just to try and get that in. Okay, well, I'm going to read it off at the top anyway, and um, I'll be putting an article up uh, with, the, uh, <coughs> with the picture of this so you can read it for yourself so anyway um, this is also from the uh, West Hereford uh, uh, Watford uh, Hospital uh, basically uh, uh, which is West Hereford Hospital NHS Trust uh, and it says thank you for your request for information I am pleased to provide the following responses listed below so statistics for infants that are stillborn last five years starting 2007 to 2012 um, now the actual stillborn statistics um, they kind of show that there was a bit of a peak in 2009-10 um, and, uh, and then basically a drop off 2010-11 and then a slight rise 2011-12 I mean kind of looking at the uh, sort of averages there I mean, we're certainly seeing an increase, um, I would say, um, but uh, nothing, nothing, nothing as definitive as we had with the respiratory. However, when I bring you down to this bit, uh, and I'll just zoom out, I just want to make sure you get all that. So that's uh, statistics for the last five years. And basically, that's from 2007 to 2012. Now, in 2007 um, and 2008, um, where we were getting low respiratory issues, uh, we were getting 283 people uh, having uh, miscarriages uh, from this particular hospital. And there's a lot of hospitals in the UK. So that's quite, uh, 
quite an issue. And, and um, 2008, 2009, we're getting an increase, goes up about 100 in this particular hospital. Um, and then it increases again, about another 80 or so. Um, and then 2010 and 11, we have a little drop. So maybe that, uh, we have that, that correlation there between the high in uh, stillbirths uh, of 34, which is statistically uh, significant in 2009, and a drop uh, obviously afterwards, uh, which we saw, but uh, the drop wasn't too, too, uh, too drastic. But the increase to 535, that certainly is drastic in 2011 to 2012. And I, I think that's, um, that is statistically uh, significant and that the increases year on year are statistically significant when matched up with the, uh, the data and, and bearing in mind the uh, outputs from these uh, MOX uh, facilities and the medical facilities because uh, you know, there's a shortage of medical isotopes so they're under pressure to make these. Um, and... Uh, all right, okay, well, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to keep this short. I'm going to put this up. I'm going to put links to it. Um, you can have a look at this stuff yourself. Um, I'll put a link also to UC Berkeley, uh, who are having a discussion uh, about the um, iodine one through one killing babies and, and all the things that was about. Uh, also, some great information in there about how to protect yourself, which wasn't told to people in the mainstream media. Okay, well, <clears throat> I'm just going to leave you with that. <clears throat> and... Uh, it's quite shocking uh, statistics and a big heads up to Jam Noise 72 uh, for the, you know, I'll leave a link for her uh, video and she does some great research and she's certainly done some absolutely fantastic research here. This is, uh, this is just, it correlates you know, perfectly with uh, the Fukushima thing um, and it would be interesting to see the 2012 statistics as well. Of course, we don't know if this is from, we presume this is from January to January not from April to April, but um, uh, I'm not 100% sure about that. If I get clarification, I'll let you know. <laughs> but uh, the stats themselves sort of, uh, they, do, they do speak for themselves, I think. And uh, there was something in 2009 and 10 worth bearing in a little investigation on, I suspect. All right, well, look, thanks a lot for your uh, um, time and effort uh, of uh, watching the video and you know, if you're interested, have a look at a few of the other videos. And more importantly, do some investigation for yourself on uh, air quality in Europe and you'll, it'll turn up some quite um, amazing uh, statistics which uh, we're not being told about. Um, you know, there's a, there's a sort of a limit on to how much uh, the papers can say about this for many different reasons. You know, the UK could get uh, fined by the Olympic Committee and so on and so on and it's... Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of corporate reasons why uh, we don't want to be told that MOX is very dirty for our atmosphere and it's, uh, you know, it's killing things and uh, making peeping, people unwell. Um, okay, all right, well, I thought I'd leave it with that. I think that's it. Enough of me. Um, 